I'm here at the 2023 Rock Check Olympics with Peter Milan from Impact Shooting. We're going to talk about five ways to get on target and stay on target. Gavin Gear here from Ultimate Reloader. Pete, it's been so good to be with you here at the Rock Check Olympics. Likewise, man, it's been an absolute blast. <laughs> it was so cool to see you take the PRS stage and to run the shooters through kind of a demo and some tips and tricks and training and then to just hammer targets and people did really well. So what I thought would be fun would be for my audience, a lot of these people really want to know what are the most fundamental and best value ways to get on target and stay on target like in a PRS or precision hunting context. What do you think? So with regards to precision rifle, and that's something that we sort of saw this whole week or the last couple of days, is we have mountains, multiple targets at different ways. Mm -hmm. Often what I see new people doing or even experienced shooters that are perhaps trying their hand at a precision rifle match for the first time, yep. they're over magnified. So they okay. just cannot find their targets and they end up burning up a lot of their allocated stage time mm -hmm. just to find a target and they end up timing out on the stage. So my Great. advice is even if we're shooting at like a thousand yards, I'm mm -hmm. doing like 12 to 15 magnification yep. on a first focal plane scope that's important to note um, and yep. that allows me a big enough field of view also what the lower magnification does for you if you're highly magnified in other words like cranked up to 25 power yep. any little vibration gets amplified where like it's almost like when you come down a little bit on that magnification it seems like you're holding your rifle a little bit smooth right. uh, uh, steadier right. you, you aren't really it's a mental thing it's yeah. a little bit of a placebo <laughs> thing yeah right. so just back down your magnification a little bit, you should be able to find your targets a little bit mm -hmm. quicker. Nice. Also, okay. spot your misses and things like that. Manage recoil a little bit better. See trace, right? Because exactly. you have to be magged out a little bit to, mm. to see those high shots. 100%. Yep. yep, okay. So, magnification number one, what's yeah. number two? Number two is, it's not a gear race. <laughs> Don't invest in the latest and greatest. Well, my sponsor will kill me for saying this, but <laughs> get good stuff and then spend money on training and actually yeah. put in the time to go train. Because okay. often guys are chasing marginal gains by buying better, better gear. If you rather took that money and invested in like precision rifle training, either in person or online mm -hmm. or something like that, or you took that money and bought ammunition with it and actually went to the range and trained, yep. you'd be way better off and a way better shooter. The order that I did it in, I shot my first match, realized I sucked at this, and before <laughs> I dumped a whole bunch of lead into dirt, I mm -hmm. actually went out and got training nice. so that I knew what to go work on. Because otherwise, it's very much like a golf swing. If I just go figure it out by myself, mm -hmm. I might learn some bad habits that could be really difficult to get rid of later well, down the line. My mentality is, even when I'm learning gunsmithing, don't you want to kind of fast track to high success? Yeah. And isn't that best done when you have a good mentor, a good teacher, you know, sucking up resources mm. online. You've got online training yes, for, I for do, PRS. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and that's been something I'd improved in. You know, I used to go off on my own and try and learn it uh, from scratch. And I realized that's just not the most efficient way to do it. I know. It. What an amazing time we're in where we can tap into people like Eric or, you know, um, Nils to just soak up information from yep. the world's best shooters in the comfort of your own home. That is such a freaking privilege. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so how about third? You were talking about bags a moment yeah. ago. Talk, talk about bags specifically. This is also one thing that massively changes. I mean, they call them game changer bags for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Having the right bag, I prefer a heavier bag when I'm doing competition style shooting. And I'm a one bag guy, so I don't faff around with like big pillows and everything. <laughs> because I also feel like it makes me a well-rounded shooter and not yeah. using gear to solve problems. Right. So I go, if you have the right bag with like, to give you an example, when I started in the sport, I traveled to the Precision Rifle Series finale with the little square bag with like foam light, you know, the stuff yeah. that like floats in the wind. Yeah. I had that. No stability in my rifle. So wow. no, like I hit almost nothing. Yeah. Well, I, I did all right, but yeah, you know, completely the wrong bag. So get the right bag from the start mm -hmm. because they will also save yourself having like a pile of bags that you purchase mm -hmm. that you end up realizing doesn't work. Because most, most Precision Rifle shooters have like a... Yeah. Yeah, the graveyard, we have that, <laughs> and, and we end up using a game changer quite quite often because yeah. it's rock solid and it's quite versatile once you learn how to use it for mm. different shooting positions, yeah. which is quite different, actually. Exactly, and yeah. the really good thing about that is you can use it as front support, rear support, yep. the whole shebang. Yep, absolutely. So how about the fourth tip or item? This kind of two rolled into one, really. PRS is obviously a time-based discipline, right? Big time. <laughs> 
<laughs> Literally. 90 <laughs> seconds to destroy several targets at ridiculous ranges. It's mind-boggling. The first yeah. time you do it, it's like, you've got to be kidding me, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you very quickly become proficient. But what guys often do is they rush to try and get all their mm -hmm. shots off. And this is very much a garbage in, garbage out type of sport. If you don't see where you're missing because you're immediately moving to the next position or your fundamentals are bad, but let's yeah. focus on the time for now. I often guys see, and it, and it'll actually look like they're rushing, whereas you see a seasoned shooter shooting and it's very smooth because mm -hmm. they kind of got that cadence figured out. But in the beginning, it's way more valuable to just take your time, make the shots count that you are taking. Instead of taking eight rush shots, mm -hmm. take five slower shots, but see where you're missing or potentially impacting. And that'll make you a much better shooter down the line than to try and rush through all your stages. Because yeah. you will learn a lot less by rushing through all your stages, but cracking off eight rounds versus five. Absolutely. Here at the Rock Chuck Olympics, uh, I was following uh, mm. Adam Weiss from Pudi Hood channel. Mm. And I was really proud of him. He had one minute to go and he had, I think, three targets to hit. And he hit one of them because he slowed down. Mm. And if he had tried to hit all three, he would probably have none exactly. right, in that particular environment. I've definitely been there. I think it's probably good to time out occasionally mm. so that you know where the limit is, mm. especially if people aren't calling time. Yeah. No, that's that's really good. Slow down. And it's hard to do when you're hunting because yeah. you see the animal moving or if it's a rock chuck, mm. you know it might duck down into its den. But again, would you rather have a good a good shot at a kill or would you rather just see the shot fly over his head, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that kind of leads to, to the last one. And I would say is that's and Phil Vallejo says this all the time, keep your face on the gun. I've hmm. seen so many times guys engaging steel or hunting for that matter. Yeah. And they've got, let's say they've got a $2,000 optic or a $1,000 optic, really doesn't matter. It's a magnified optic. You're going to see better downrange looking through a magnified rifle scope than doing this right. immediately after right. the shot cracks. And guys <laughs> do that so often where they'll crack a shot and the head comes up and they try right. and see what happened downrange. Keep your face on the gun, keep looking through your scope and try and see where you're impacting the steel. As we get more proficient, you mm -hmm. can actually tell like the steel mm -hmm. is flexing like that. So you know you hit it on the right hand side. You can make a little bit of adjustment, bring that next shot in towards the center and just buy yourself a little bit margin for error if the wind potentially picks up on you. And same thing in a hunting environment. If we're hunting, mm -hmm. you'll often see if you watch my hunting videos, like I'll engage an animal and even though I'm seeing it fall in my optic, mm -hmm. I'm also staying on it for that little bit extra. Yeah to make sure that it doesn't get up or whatever reason. The follow through. Mm. You, you even, I, yeah. I've tried to really focus on pull, holding the trigger back until I see mm. what's going on and focus on that and then reset. Yeah. You know? So I kind of have a rule of thumb when I'm shooting, even if it's long range or, or the type mm -hmm. of shooting we're doing today. I try and stay on that follow through for as long as I think it should take the bullet to get there. If the steel doesn't move and I don't see dust, but it's like a second later, I know the bullet should be yeah. there then I'll start whatever I need to do next. Yeah. If it's a longer shot, I'm going to wait on it until it should have been downrange to get some kind of feedback on that. Perhaps if we're shooting sort of, you know, even the, the far target today was 1280 or something. Mm -hmm. um, there's enough time where you can crack your first shot, rack the bolt, so you can kind of shoot <laughs> in the same conditions and still see your other impact yeah. land. Um, so that's something just to save a little bit of time that we sometimes do, but big time, keep your face on the gun and keep looking through the optic you spend yep. good money on because yep. it's going to be better than your naked eye. Man, this is good stuff. I absolutely love this. These are some great things to focus on. Pete, thank you so much for coming here thank you and very for much. sharing this knowledge. Now, again, if you want to know more, go to Impact Shooting YouTube channel, Impact Shooting on Instagram and the pay to stream content. Um, we're going to link that down below the video. Good deal. So thanks again, Pete. Thanks a lot. That guys. concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. 
Thanks again for watching.